If you're thinking of hiking somewhere other than the U.S., there's no better place to go than Europe. Joe and I headed to Switzerland last fall, and maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration to say that we hiked. What we really did was walk. We walked along farm roads and cow paths and well-signed popular trails. We stopped to eat and drink and take in the incredible views along the way. And when we had had enough of that, we took funiculars or gondolas or buses or boats to get back home. Overall, we hiked or walked, whatever you want to call it, 10 mostly flat routes, needing to carry only the lightest of packs with enough room for a jacket and a bottle of water. It's very different from hiking in the States, and I highly recommend it. If you fly into Frankfurt and head south to Switzerland, consider stopping in Liechtenstein along the way to break up the drive. It's a beautiful mountainous nation with lots of places to hike. We drove to Gafly, a tiny village in the mountains of Vaduz. We intended to hike about eight miles on the somewhat difficult Furstensteig Trail, but we quickly got to a point where the trail had a steep drop off. And with our jet lag and lack of sleep, we quickly decided to turn around and hike along the farm roads and enjoy the views with the cows and the goats along the way. In the end, this hike was about four and a half miles, and you can make it longer or shorter by following various paths that run throughout the area. From Liechtenstein, it's only a couple of hours drive to Lauterbrunnen, Switzerland, where we settled in for the week and got ready for more hiking. Lauterbrunnen is within a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's one of the most spectacular high mountain landscapes in the world, and it showcases the Eiger, Munch, and Jungfrau Mountains. You might think in this mountainous area you'll only find steep hikes, but that's not true at all. Our first walk here was a five-mile trek from Mürren, a little village on the mountainside above Lauterbrunnen, to Gimmelwald, an even smaller village along the mountain. It was relatively flat because we rode one gondola up to the start of the route, walked to Mürren, and then on to Gimmelwald, and then took a different gondola back down into the Lauterbrunnen Valley. It's a beautiful and relatively easy route, and like on most walks in this area, you can easily stop and get something to eat and drink along the way. Mirren is one of the most popular places in the world for parasailing and base jumping because of the high, steep cliffs above the Lauterbrunnen Valley. According to one base jumper I talked to, they can manage five or six jumps per day due to the gondola, train, and bus route that links their landing spot to the jumping spot in Mirren. The thought of flinging myself off a cliff is not at all appealing to me, but it's amazing to watch. Lauterbrunnen is also a popular place to watch the fall Alpabzug, aka a cow parade. Throughout Switzerland, in September, cows and goats move from their summer mountain pastures to their winter valley pastures. And if you want to see 10 minutes of cows, I'll put a link above to a video for you to check out. After the fun of the Alpabzug, there was plenty of time to walk along the Weisse Lutschina River to Trummelbach Falls. The Lauterbrunnen Valley is known for its many waterfalls, 72 of them from what I've read, and Trümmelbach is one of the largest ones. There's a small entry fee that gets you a short cog rail ride up to various viewing points as you go up through the falls. You can buy some cheese and sausage from the vending machine along the way, but we had already brought along our lunch. This walk was about five miles round trip and flat as can be, except for the stairs going up to the various waterfall viewing points. The town of Isenflu is about two and a half miles south of Lauterbrunnen, in the direction of Interlaken, and the next morning we walked to it following a farm path from behind our apartment. Mm -hmm. 
Overall, this walk was five miles, with great views along the way of the valley below and the mountains above. There are usually three or four cow parades in this area each year, and we got back to our apartment just in time to see another one. A few goats came along for this one. We ended the day with a three-mile walk along the paths near Steckelberg, a tiny village at the very end of the Lauterbrunnen Valley. Trails in this area head off into every direction, and we wandered around on a few of them. The weather was perfect, and the views phenomenal. One of the most popular hikes in this area is the four-mile, nearly flat route from Manlishen to Kleine Scheidig. To get there, we again took advantage of the excellent transportation options, taking the train from Lauterbrunnen to Wengen. Then there's a gondola from Wengen to Manlishen, which is the high point for many of this area's winter ski runs. From here, there's a nice, wide trail over to Kleine Scheidig. We stopped for lunch along the way and then took the train back down to Lauterbrunnen. You can make your route longer and steeper by skipping the train and gondola and hiking the whole way. There are plenty of other route options too. After three days of hiking in Lauterbrunnen, it was time to broaden our horizons so we headed to Meiringen, just east of Interlaken. Meiringen is the site of Reichenbach Falls, and Reichenbach Falls is where Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's hero, Sherlock Holmes, faked his death during a fight with Professor Moriarty. We took the funicular up to the falls, hiked around, took in the beautiful views, and made it back to the funicular more successfully than old Sherlock did. In 1890, about the same time Sherlock Holmes was faking his death at Reichenbach Falls, an elevated path was built in a beautiful chasm that's just a few miles away from the falls. The Ara Gorge, or Arashlucht, is an incredible sight. 10,000 years ago, water runoff from melting glaciers eroded this gorge. It's about 150 feet deep and ranges from 3 to 100 feet wide. Walking along the wooden path above the river is a unique experience. For a final hike in Switzerland, we headed south to Interlaken and walked along Lake Brienz from Iseltwald to Giesbach Falls. There's a beautiful castle in Iseltwald that now serves as a rehab center at the start of the four and a half mile route and a fancy old European hotel at the end. Once again, there was a restored funicular to take us up to the falls. 
And the boat ride across the lake on the way back was a perfect way to end our week of walking in Switzerland. Hiking and walking in Europe isn't better or worse than hiking in the States. It's just different. If you have a chance to go, you'll be able to see those differences for yourself. Wherever you are, long walks and day hikes can reveal a world you didn't know existed. And after enjoying that new world, you can still make it back to a nice dinner and soft bed at night. I hope you'll get out there and take a nice long walk, wherever you are.